Hey guys and gals, this is Randall Standridge. Um, I am in the middle of working on a drill right now and I thought this would be a good opportunity to demonstrate something that I've been wanting to demonstrate for a while. Um, on the drill and visual design page, um, one term that gets bandied around a lot is the term Zingali, as in, you know, I'm going to Zingali this drill. Um, and for some of you younger designers, or maybe even some of you older ones, um, you may or may not know what that means. So if you do, great, and you may have a different interpretation of it than I do. But um, if you don't, you might find this helpful when you get stuck in a uh, situation where this you know, could prove useful. So basically to describe what I'm doing right now, I'm working on a drill for my show Pandora Reopened, available from Grand Mesa Music. You know, I've got to put that plug in there. Um, and I've got a section where uh, from this pa from page 22 to page 24, I know where I want to end up. I know the form and the shape I want to end up in. I don't have the color guard quite in the spot I want yet, but I'll, I'll place them once I get everything else going. Um, but it's this middle section that I'm not happy with because it basically, it, well, first of all, if you watch it, let me pull the window over here, it doesn't move very fast or very interestingly. Um, so it just, you know, kind of does this. You know, we've got some props we need to get out in, you know, in the spot. And uh, the overall motion is just kind of boring right now. So um, whenever you find yourself in this situation, doing what you know a few of us refer to as zingaliing um, tends to be a, a good helpful. So what you're going to do is you know go. What I do when I do this is I place things where I know I want them to end up. Like for instance, in this spot. Let's zoom in just a little bit here. I'm going to need to be a little bit closer. Um, by the way, if you see me do anything or like anything that occurs in here that you would like to know, like hey, how'd you do that? Um, feel free to shoot me a message or just post on this um, on this post and we'll address that later. Um, but anyway, so I've got, uh, you know, I want to make this more interesting and more, you know, drill-ish so it looks a little bit more specific. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, you know, I, I can see that like for instance these trombones are, uh, you know, almost in a straight line already. Um, and incidentally, you know, sometimes with the Zingali stuff, um, you know, it's a little bit of trial and error just to see what works. So we're going to try this, and it could end up changing later, but this should give you an idea of, you know, the overall general technique. So I'm going to um, place them in a straight line, you know, just something that's easy to hit for midway point. You know, look over here, it's just a 10 to uh, 5 step size, so not too bad. Um, and we're going to hit that. Um, so then, you know, to the next thing, I want to make sure to copy and paste so that um, the animation gets corrected. Uh, it won't self-correct, so like anytime you're going to do a midpoint, you need to copy and paste it to the next thing you've already drawn so that um, the animation will come out smooth and correct. So, so far I've got my trombones placed. Um, let's see, I've got my trumpets. Let me just select these real quick. Um, I've got 10 trumpets and it looks like they're in this kind of you know double thing and we're headed towards this uh, curve right here um, and I want to get them around that prop so let's see here what I'm probably gonna do first I'm gonna delete them from where they are so I can see where they started oh this will be easy um, so actually I'm sorry I have nine trumpets no nope, I got ten where's the tenth one I'm not seeing it Well, <laughs> we have an errant trumpet player. Um, let me back up in the drill just a little bit. Okay, apparently we do only have nine. I don't know why it was selecting something else. Sorry for that little brain fart there. So anyway, we have nine trumpets. Still, that'll make this relatively easy. Um, I'm going to, uh, you know, again, uh, since I've got this vertical line going with the uh, with the uh, low low voices, I will just kind of make that a theme uh, for this particular move, and we will um, put them at a three-step interval to make sure that you know we have plenty of space to go through. Um, 
and then again uh, when they come out on the other side we're going to paste them into that uh, spot and that will allow them to go around the um, the prop that I'm wanting to get them around. So now we'll get my other trumpet players real quick and we're going to do something similar. Um, again, just you know, wanting to get them uh, basically out of the way. I mean, there's no like nice way to say it. Uh, just kind of get them out of the way. Um, you know, I could keep up all the vertical stuff. If I wanted to, I could throw in like, we'll see how a diagonal would look here. Um, just to give it a little bit of you know texture and visual variety. Um, so we're not totally the same. Let me put that uh, French horn player where they really need to go here in a second. I said this was a good technique. I did not say it was fast. So if, if any of you are a little bit impatient, then this is probably not the video for you. Um, but anyway, um, so we're starting to, you know, kind of see how the form will go, and then I need to, as I mentioned before, you know, we've got to paste them into the next form. So, actually, that's such a small move. I think I am going to go vertical just because we'll get a little bit more velocity out of um, coming to this form. Um, it'll, you know, give us just a little more interest as it moves, and it'll still give us plenty of space to get that prop through. So, pasting that there, and... Let's clear that out and make sure that things move correctly. So, so far, you know, over here we've got this that comes around the prop and uh, it does that and it's already you know, more interesting than it was before. So we're just gonna continue around the form up here. Um, you can see that the, uh, the uh, saxophones, which we have seven of, unfortunately, I, you know, such a great number, seven. It's the best drill number ever. Um, but uh, we're going to just pull them basically up into a two-step uh, line up here just to condense them a little bit and get them out of the way um, so we can still have some clarity um, to our forms. Um, you know, one of the nice things about this particular show, too, is that it is about boxes, and so, you know, I've done a lot of... Um, kind of, you know, boxy forms to, uh, to uh, bring the theme across, as it were. Another nice thing with woodwinds, we can typically do a tighter um, formation for them. Let me go ahead and get my saxophones while I am thinking about it, because I don't think I cut and paste them a second ago. Um, so there and then let's see these saxophones were or excuse me clarinets where are they going they're going there so let's put them on this line just so we have again a little bit of variety just kind of monitoring how things look I might want that line to be over here just to give us a little more space that'll still be an eight to five stride uh, which will be perfectly fine, um, and I like I like you know giving some space between things. I don't think like things to look cluttered, um, so you know I would just want to keep it from from looking too cluttered. Um, over here, I think I'm actually going to give them a horizontal line just so we have something that kind of matches this horizontal line over here, so that it, you know it, it has some context as to you know it is why do you have that? Um, oops, and we have a hidden flute in this prop, so let me back up just a little bit and get all the flutes that are not moving that prop. So let's say we have eight. Um, let's see, how is this moving? Okay, so we need to get them out of the way. Oops, and I need to fix that clarinet thing. That was dumb on my part, so let me get that real quick. Flip that around and fix the uh, animation there. Sorry about that. Uh, that happens sometimes. Though. You just have to have your little techniques for how to deal with stuff like that. Um, yeah. Remember, it's not a mistake if you can fix it. So, anyway. Um, I think I'm going to fold this up so it will pull itself out of the way um, of the prop and still give us that um, horizontal line that I was wanting 
trying to talk out loud as much as possible so you can kind of hear my thought process such as it is. Uh, not that you know my thoughts are necessarily the best, but just so you'll understand where I'm coming from with every decision I'm making on this kind of on the fly. Um, and I, you know, I'm going to be perfectly honest. I did not have any of like this particular set planned out before doing this. I wanted it to be as raw as possible. Um, and let's see. So then we can let this. Well, it could it could come out a couple ways. Let's see how this goes. All right, so what I actually want to do, I think, is I want to, I want the one, the people that were marching backwards to continue going backwards, so let me see how they were going backwards to make sure I, I get the right people doing that, and I already see one spot I need to fix, but I'll flip them in just a second. Okay, so F5 needs to be going backwards, so that'll need to be flipped. All right, um, incidentally, um, you know, when we saw this, if you look over here, you can see that this person's going to a wrong spot. Um, if you're not familiar with this one tool called the switch tool, uh, where you pick like two players and then you switch, swap, excuse me, swap two players, I, I call it switch, um, then it is a fantastic tool for doing rewrites, for fixing little things like this when you need to fix pathways. Um, so I'll say F5 needs to be going back, so we will clear that, and this person needs to go forward, and then forward, then forward, then forward, in, back, back, back. And that'll give us that pull through zipper effect that Zingali liked to use so much. Um, and uh, all right, so let's see how this is moving now. Probably a lot more interesting than it was before. Um, let me get that fixed real quick. And we'll see what we got so far. So. Okay, why is that clear that group now suddenly? Or, oh, were they already in a vertical line? Boy, that would be really boring. Yeah, I'm going to have to fix that. All right, but, you know, again, not a mistake if you can fix it. So, yeah, they were already, like, in this kind of vertical line. So why don't we pull them into a horizontal line? And then... do that so hopefully now we'll have a little more visual interest going on and I will need to fix whatever is going on there so it'll probably be better for them if they went the other direction so we're going to try that instead Again, you know, it never hurts to experiment. Um, you know, I mean, sometimes I plan things out way ahead of time, but sometimes I let the process kind of dictate what needs to happen, um, and you know, you just it ends up just a lot better like that. Um, one thing I will say, I can see a pathway problem right here um, as I pull through. So, what the way I'm going to fix that is, we are going to uh, just move this over a little bit so that the pathway is coming from a different position. And that should fix most of that. Um, well, that looks like a big mess. I wonder if it like changed something. I uh, see two spots that need that you know. Once again, we'll need to swap to make sure that uh, things are moving like they should. We'll swap these two real quick. And that should fix that. Okay, and then of course I just need to go through. My color guard is basically going to end up in a big mess here, so I'm going to do the same kind of thing with them. I know I want them to end up um, in a fairly, you know, evenly spread out situation. Um, I know that three of them are going to end up on these props. So, and you'll notice that I'm not worried about who's going to what because I'll fix that with copy and paste later. Um, so then I know I'm going to want. Um, I'm feeling kind of diagonal. Um, so let's see here. If we're in the middle there, middle, middle, middle. Okay. Middle, middle, middle. Yeah, real scientific here. 
middle, middle, middle. And then if we go evenly, same thing, middle, middle, middle. Yeah, again, I get things set up, and then if I need to adjust, I just adjust middle, 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 middle. And middle, middle, middle. So that we have this kind of even parallelogram thing going on. And boy, I didn't put them in the right spots at all. Um, so here, middle, middle, middle. And it needs to be up there. We'll see how that looks. Okay, why am I missing a color guard person? There we go. All right, so we've got them on their props now, and then you know uh, what I basically want to do at this point. I, I do need to figure out who ends up where. So what I what I do is I um, copy and paste. I clear. I usually try proximity match, but I will be honest, and this is no shade to Dustin or the power people, um, the pot, the proximity tool works some of the time. It does, and keeping in mind, I'm on version 9, by the way. I have not upgraded to version 10 yet. Um, I'm always a little afraid to uh, upgrade in the middle of the season because, you know, with uh, uh, you just, you know, I, I just want to make sure I'm using something I, that how I know it works. Um, so, anyway, um, we are, uh, yeah, I use the proximity tool, and it's, I mean, it got most of them. They're, most of the things seem to be, um, you know, where they should be. Um, and fortunately, um, you can just, you know, whatever isn't, although that seemed to fix it right there. Um, if it ever is, you can just drag pathways and kind of do that. So it's, it's really not that big a deal. Um, and... Just looking at this, that bothers me how close that is. So what we're going to do is we're going to move, we're going to move things just a little bit. We're going to move them down to and over four, and we're going to move these over four and up two. And uh, let's go back two that way. Back to that way that we're still in the parallelogram and uh, we're gonna and I'll fix this percussion thing here in a second um, so we'll move them over just a little bit uh, well not from there because that will not be good So now we have, uh, you know, where they're going to end up. So now I'm going to go back and just highlight my color guard. And basically, I'm just going to try to, you know, see where they're going and try to put them in positions that, uh, you know, or watch the pathways and make sure that we're not doing anything just super weird. Like you can see, like this one is basically just in the way. So we're going to move them in here. And see if that helps the situation. And actually, with that, these two will probably need to swap. So, oops, don't need a trumpet. Um, and we'll move this one further out so it's not in the way. And I basically just, I always, you know, kind of look left to right and see where things are ending up um, and generally speaking like if it's not too bad I'll just leave it alone because um, as I put in a post a couple days ago about you know one of my clients um, you know the kids will know to uh, to uh, fix pathways and things so I, I don't tend to over worry about the animation the animation is just a tool it's not the be all end all and so um, as far as that goes you know, if things look like they're generally working pretty good, I'll just leave it alone. And then we're going to go through, select all my color guard, and make sure that things are moving here. we got a little bit of an issue there, so I'll probably go back and move them up on the previous thing so they don't go through there. And same thing over here. We just need to make sure they're in a spot where we can avoid as much... Uh, 
as much um, unnecessary collision as possible. And also keep in mind that this is a transitional set. So I, sometimes I think, you know, we try to make every single set look spectacular when really what we need to do is just make, you know, the transitional sets exactly what they are, which is transitions. Um, so let's see here how this is moving. Select all the color guard. And that would be, to me, that would be where people can figure out, you know, what would collide and what would not. Um, and then the last thing I will, of course, do is these people that are moving the props, uh, they're actually going to uh, move around to the front and remain stationary in poses for the rest of the thing just because. I don't want to get them back into the form, and we'll do some body sculpting with them to help our vocabulary score as well. Um, so we'll just pull them around real quick, and actually I can do this with the uh, track tool because they're all in basically the same spots. So we're going to track tool that, pull them around here, get the next similar spot. Pull them around there, and the next similar spot, and pull them around there. And then we have our staged positions. So now this whole thing, let me pull this back over here. Um, you know, so I'm not going to say it's like groundbreaking drill or anything, but it's better than it was before, and that this is what you know, is essentially what when people talk about you know zingaliing something, this is what they mean. <laughs> So now you can see the transition looks much better defined. Uh, it's not as it's not as messy. Um, so you know, and again, this isn't necessarily the best zingaliing in the world, but hopefully this will serve as a demonstration. So the you know to recap a little bit, if you're stuck on how to transition something, just go to the spot you know you want to get to. You know, pull your anchor all the way over, and then just figure out the middle as you go. So whenever you hear somebody saying zingaliing. That's generally speaking what they're talking about, or at least for myself, that's what I'm talking about. Well, I hope you find this video helpful, and as always, peace, love, and music.